Hey, a few years ago, I bought this, um, not this one, but a Honda CRV like this one. And it came with a key like this. It only came with one key. So I wanted a duplicate. Um, it turns out they're really expensive to have made. Now the key is a little weird, but it's not crazy hard to get a new one cut. Uh, but to have it reprogrammed for the car is more expensive. So I thought I'm just going to take a stab at this, uh, stumble my way through and see why I couldn't do this myself. So the first thing I did was take the key apart and uh, to get the key out of the uh, key fob, you do have to essentially break it uh, because the key, the metal key is actually injection molded into the plastic. So you can see here, I kind of ground out the plastic and that's how I was able to get the key out. It's a little annoying because forever more the key will be kind of loose in the fob so there's no good way to put it back together what i did though is i took the metal key and i put it in a flatbed scanner and i did scan both sides of it but it turns out that's unnecessary you'll see that in a minute here i am in fusion 360 and i'll just walk you through the whole process once i got that um regular 2d scan from a photo scanner so the first thing i did was import it as a canvas so there is the key image just as i scanned it and from based on that i uh, first calibrated it so it was the right size and then i made a sketch and basically traced all of the uh, features of the key the next thing I did was extrude it to the thickness. I measured the thickness of the key and extruded it to the overall thickness of the key. Uh, I extruded down all of those features of the key. So I, again, measured the, the height of that feature and extruded it. I also extruded the hole here at the same time. The next thing I did was create an axis that went through the center of the key. And then the last thing I did was just uh, rotate it around there. So I made a circular pattern. The reason I didn't mirror this side to the other is because it's actually the opposite. So it's the same, you know, if you're just to glance at the key, you might think the two sides are different, but they're the same. They're just opposite each other. And of course, the reason for that is so that you can put the key in either direction, it'll still work. So that was very easy to do. The next thing is uh, I have this 3D model and now I went to shapeways.com and you can just submit a 3D model and they'll print it in all different materials. So you can see here I had it printed in steel uh, where it says bronze. That's basically just the color of it. It's, I don't think there's actually bronze in it. Then uh, I got the key in the mail and it looked pretty good. Um, you can see here, it kind of looks like the original key just to get it, to get a, a handle on it and to put it into the car. I just took a screw and, and mounted it to this washer, put it in the key hole of the car. It works to open the doors. It works perfectly to, uh, turn the ignition, but I, I'm not sure at this point, if I had tried to start the car, I would, I would have known there was trouble coming if I did. I got, uh, a key fob, a used key fob for the same model Honda or a variety of Hondas that look the same in uh, in the mail from eBay. And you can see here, now the keys look pretty much identical. The next step, once it was in the key fob, was just to let my car know that this was a valid key fob. So that's really easy to do. You can just look around on YouTube. There's a sequence that you go through and the car doors will open using this new key fob and the, the key fob buttons work as you expect them to with your car. So now for the sad ending of the story, <laughs> if I, I, I took these two keys and went out to the car and uh, you can see that with my original key, I can turn the key to the uh, first stage, to the second stage, I can start the car. Uh, with, the, with the fake key, the duplicate key, it doesn't and this little green key light comes on. So it turns out, and you know, I probably could have done the research beforehand, but like I said, I just wanted to kind of go through this process and experimentally figure out everything along the way. What I found out, of course, is that the car has an immobilizer, which isn't relying on the key fob necessarily, but this little immobilizer chip inside the key fob. My key fob doesn't look exactly like this, but the idea is that it's buried, the chip is buried somewhere in the plastic of the key fob itself. There's not really a way to hack into the chip itself, but a couple of things that you could do at this point, which I haven't done yet, are to either abandon the whole idea of having an immobilizer and just hide a key fob with the chip in it 
in your dashboard. And I think the location of it is actually critical. You can't just put it somewhere in there. There's a sensor and it has to be very close to that sensor. But that's one hack way to do it. Another way, if you wanted to get really hardcore, is to actually reprogram the ECU, the computer inside the car, which is essentially, I think, the same thing that the dealer would end up doing. They probably have some really streamlined way of doing it. You can watch this guy's video for a really low-level way of hacking the ECU to uh, recognize new keys. But in my case, I still have one key, and I'm just crossing my fingers that I don't lose it. So that's the end of the story for me for now. Uh, if there are any updates, I'll add it in the comments below.